God calls David a man after his own heart. Like I said, this was, David already had a track record, a track record with God concerning the heart issue. God saw David's heart. David was not after God because he was so grateful. I'm sure he, he was grateful when he became king, but that was not ever what he was looking for. He wasn't, he, he didn't, the Bible never um, tells us in all the scriptures that David was so ambitious. He said to himself, one day I'm going to be king. No, he was just a simple man living a simple life. It was God who went after him because God, God who created us, God who knows us. Remember, God, we, we start where God finished. So God knows everything about our life. Our blueprint of life is in God's hands. He's the one who created everyone. He's already mapped out everything for us. And we just got, we just stepping into it because for God, nothing is new for us. It's new because it's the unknown. When we stumble, when we come across, it was like, Oh, God is doing a new thing. No, it was already there. As far as God is concerned, it's new to us at the time when we get the revelation about it, you know, and there are times, there are certain things we will not get the revelation if we are not ready, if we're not spiritually ready, if our heart is not ready. God knows our heart too. He knows the good things and he knows the bad things. He knows. So therefore, we see God call David a man after his own heart. We see in the life of David, he was he was he was never trying to score, let's say, score points with God to say, "Oh, ah, I do this, I do this better than than King Saul. I do this better than than this person. Look, God, look what I'm doing. Look, look." No, he was never trying to flatter God. He's never trying to score points and, and show that he's he's a better king than this. He never tried to compare himself to other kings. He was just there doing the Lord's bid. And that's what he was, was concerned about, to do God's will, to do the work of God, to do the work that the Lord called him to do to the best of his um, knowledge and ability. He was not looking for great evaluation from God. In fact, he was always so concerned when he fell, when he falls short, that not to um, disappoint God. He always wanted to please God, not to please himself, but to please God. And it's not the kind of pleasing God like eye service or like flattery. No, sincere from his heart. The Lord knows his heart. Just as the Lord knows each and every one of us. He knows our hearts. He knows the tension of our hearts. He knows when we do something, when we say something, the tension behind it. He knows that we cannot fool him. We may fool others and even convince ourselves and fool ourselves, but we cannot fool God. So we have to be very careful when we are dealing with the Lord to deal with him in all honesty, in all truth, withholding nothing. And that's the kind of man David was. He withheld nothing from God. So therefore, it was God who saw or sought David out way back when he was just a little shepherd boy in the back desert, all by himself, minding his father's Jesse's flocks. God saw his heart, how well he protected the flocks against the bear, against the lion, against um, 
against anything that will come to harm harm the flow. Let's let's take a look at the event where David and encounter the lion and the bear when he was looking after the sheep. If we look first Samuel chapter 17 if we look at verse from verse 35 to 37 and this is um David who was telling the his story of what happened his account of what of his encounter with the bear and the lion and I went out after him and smote him and delivered out of let's go back to verse let's go back to verse um 34 and this is, was a time when goliath was coming against the, the army of god and this is um when david come on, on the scene and this is what david you know i guess the, the I don't know if he was justifying, but he just to say, given his experience that he had with the bear and the lion. And so in his mind and in his heart, truly in his heart, he believed the same way he knocked the lion and the bear that he could deal with Goliath the same. Because his main concern was to honor the name of God. He would do anything to honor God name so we could see this is david a small boy a shepherd boy speaking the way he's speaking he didn't even think you know dream about becoming king all this heaven was taking note all this god was taking god see god see everything my brothers and sisters don't don't worry about not um being seen by men by the world or even by being recognized by men by the world or by by not you know when men show in, in gratitude or or don't don't worry about it that's what the bible say whatever we do we do it unto god our reward is from the lord and then we should not do because we know we're gonna get a reward because then therefore there's an interior motive do it with a full heart because we love the we love the lord that should be our attitude and god knows it we cannot really try to fool him he knows when we're doing something because at the end we know we're gonna get a reward from him so therefore if there was no reward attached would we really have done it you see that this was not in the case of david here in the case of david he just loved the lord he just reverenced god he just know god need it to be honored the name of god is sacred he just he just loved the lord and respect and honor and out of that from his heart that's all he showed the outward it was from the inward first before he could show it outward so at uh, this scene here in um first samuel 17 um and david is talking to the king and david said unto saul thy servant kept his father's sheep and there came a lion and a bear and took a lamb out of the flock and i went after him and i smote him and delivered it out of his mouth and when he arose um, against me i caught him by the beard and smote him and slew him thy servant slew both the lion and the bear and this uncircumcised philistine so he's referring to Goliath, shall be as one of them, seeing he have defiled the armies of the living God. David say, Moreover, the Lord have delivered me out of the paw of the lion. You see, he didn't just start, stop there to say, I, because I'm so smart, because I'm so, I have so much strength, because I've, you know, I've done studies of lions and bears. I know how to catch them. I know their vulnerable spot. I am so smart and I'm so strong. I'm so special. I'm so great. No. 
Yes, he, he, he told Saul what he did, but at the same time, he gave God the glory for it. He said here in verse 37, David said, moreover, the Lord hath delivered me out of the paw of the lion and out of the paw of the bear. He will deliver. See right now, his faith is in God. His trust is in God. He knows God as his deliverer. He knows even that, that he fought the lion and the bear in his own strength. There's no way a little boy like that could have conquered such a... a, 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 a a, a ferocious um, um animal those two animals are very for, ferocious and they're out there to kill to the, on, on on the spot they would have chew him and spit him out but he saying that it was the lord who had delivered me out of their paws and now he's saying he has that firm assurance he has that uh um belief he truly believed his faith was in god he trusts God with all his heart. He said, he will deliver me out of the hand of the Philistine. And Saul said unto David, go and the Lord be with you. So you see all this. How could the Lord not call this man? And at that time he wasn't a man. He was a little boy after his own heart. He never deviate from that love, from that respect, from that reverence, from that trust, from the belief that he had in God. When he became king, he continued in that pattern. That's why when he, he fell, he went straight to God to confess his sin. And the Lord believed him and... And the Lord um, pardon his sin. The Bible also said in um, in um, Luke, if we turn, you see, to some, this may have been a little thing because he was just a little boy mining some sheep. Mm -hmm. To some, it might be a little thing, but nothing is ever little. And even in the little things, when we trust the Lord in the little things and for the little things, the Lord himself, he's the one who will elevate. He's the one who will trust us in the larger stuff, as we can see. Even as David was so careful about the safety of the sheep, and it was one lamb that like this lion and bear too. He didn't care. He could have said, well, there's so many. I'll just go back home and my father will understand, you know, talking about Jesse. He will understand a little boy like me. What could I have done? He should be grateful that at least I'm alive and I can continue to mind the rest of the lamb. But one, it's just like um, when Jesus talked about, where, uh, about the parable where there's a, uh, the shepherd, a good shepherd will have a hundred sheep and one will go astray. He will leave the 99 and go after that one. This was a perfect example. David demonstrated this in the story where he fought the, the lion and the bear over that one lamb that they took out of the flock. If you turn into um, the book of Luke, chapter 16 verse 10 and this is Jesus speaking here he that is faithful in that which is least is faithful also in much see the same David who was faithful in mining sheep he was faithful mining the children of Israel when he became king, when the Lord um, anointed him king over his people. Um, is least is faithful also in that which is least is faithful also in much. And he that is unjust in the least is unjust also in much. Why, if 
David was not faithful as a little boy, a little shepherd boy in mining the sheep. Because I'm sure human beings um, are, uh, the sheep are least as compared to human beings. We cannot compare animal to human being. So if he's so much so mindful, so if he was acting unjust and didn't care and allow all these um, animal to come and devour, every time he goes home, there's a couple missing. Would the Lord have picked him to be, to be king over his people? I don't think so. And this is exactly what the Bible is telling us here, what Jesus is telling us here in Luke 16 verse 10 so my brothers and sisters it doesn't matter what where you find your place in the kingdom it doesn't matter what position or why or what assignment as long as it is an assignment from the lord don't do it with whole heart it doesn't matter who you may see doing great and mighty that's in the world's eyes. Maybe that's what God called them to do. And God called them to do that. So it doesn't matter. So we just got to um, be um, consistent, be faithful in whatever the Lord call us to do. Whatever it is, do it unto God. And do not let anyone... Um, look down upon you of what you're doing as long as you know you're doing for the kingdom of God. The Lord is the faithful one. Hallelujah. So he was trusted in the little things so he will also be trusted in the big thing. So you see David worked from his heart pure and sincere when he didn't have you see when he was in the desert he didn't have an audience he didn't have anybody looking he didn't have to show off when he went after the bear after the the lion there was no one there cheering him up to say oh yeah let me see who's gonna win the bear or david no this means he was doing it from all his heart he wasn't doing it to show off to anybody but he knew that that lamb needed to be rescued and he was there and the Lord used him to, used him to rescue the lamb out of the paws of the bear and the lion. And he did that. He worked honestly and he worked with integrity. You see, with all these qualities and the character that David already had, the Lord just picked him and Lord added to it the lord perfect all these characters in him all these good characters and good attitude one may say that david was set apart called by god and anointed by god why because david's father was not a king so he did not inherit the throne he was handpicked by God. God's anointing was upon him to rule. And we could see this if you turn to the book of um, 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel chapter 16. Let's start from verse 1. And the Lord said unto Samuel, how long will thou mourn for Saul, seeing I have rejected him from reigning over Israel? Fill thy horn with oil, and go, I will send thee to Jesse, the Bethlehem, for I have provided, for I have provided me a king among his sons. <laughs> uh, this this, even when I was reading this today, it jumped at me. That's another study in itself, by itself. That last line right there. That's something to chew on. That's something to ponder on. 
That's something to meditate on. That's something we need revelation from. I'm just going to leave that alone for now. But just um, meditate on that, my brothers and sisters. For I have, this is God who's talking. God is telling the um, prophet um, Samuel. God said to Samuel, for I have provided me. <laughs> I have provided me a king among his sons. Should we say more about being called, appointed, anointed, handpicked, sought out? I have provided me. God provided himself. This is something very deep, my brothers and sisters. It is deep, very deep. And I'm going to leave it alone another time. By God's grace, I will um, do a study on that one. We're going to leave that right there. And Samuel said, How can I go? If Saul hear it, he will kill me. And the Lord said, Take an heifer with thee and say, I am come to, to sacrifice to the Lord. I am come to sacrifice to the Lord. And call Jesse to the, sacri to the sacrifice. And I will show thee what thou shalt do. And thou shalt anoint unto me him whom I name unto thee. Anoint unto me. Anoint unto God. Anoint unto God. When we when one is anointed unto God, whatever we do, it has to be unto God. Whatever we do has to bring glory to his name. It's not about what man thinks, what people think, what we think, but it is God's will and will only that shall be done. Um, that shall anoint unto me him whom I name unto thee. And Samuel did that which he, the Lord spake, and came to Bethlehem. And the elders of the town trembled at his coming and said, Cometh thou peace, <laughs> peaceably? And he said, peaceably, I am come to sacrifice unto the Lord. Sanctify yourself and come with me to the sacrifice. And he, sancti and he sanctified Jesse and his sons and called them to the sacrifice. And it came to pass when they were come that he looked on Eliab and say surely the lord's anointed is before him but the lord said unto samuel look not on his countenance it's not from the outside it's not what person look like on the outside or on the height of the statue it's not what they have that matters to god because i have refused him for the Lord search not as man sees. For men look on the outward appearance, but the Lord looked on the on the heart. There we go. A man after God's own heart. He knew David way before David came to serve him as king. Then Jesse called uh, Abinadab. Then Jesse called Abinadab and made him pass before Samuel. And he said, Neither have the Lord chosen this. Then Jesse made Shaman to pass by. And he said, Neither have the Lord chosen this. Again, Jesse made seven of his sons to pass before Samuel. And Samuel said unto Jesse, The Lord have not chosen these. And Samuel said unto Jesse, are, are here all the children? 
And he said, There remain yet the youngest, and behold, he keepeth the sheep. And Samuel said unto Jesse, Send and fetch him, for we will not sit down till he come either. And he sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy and with all of a beauty of, of a beautiful countenance and goodly to look to. And the Lord said, Arise, anoint him, for this is he. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brethren. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. So Samuel, arose, so Samuel rose up and went to Ramah. See? The Lord, David, was anointed to do this work. The Spirit of God came upon him right there. Right there. He was just not a king who was heir to a throne. He was an anointed king. And you see, the anointing is what makes the difference in everything, my brothers and sisters, not just in the life of King David. It's also in your life, in my life, in every life of the children of God. He has given us his spirit. He has anointing us to do his work. We have to walk in his ways, know what his desire and his will. I want us to um, turn to the book of Romans. Romans. Romans chapter 8, verse 8, 10. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. When we have the spirit of God in us, when the spirit of God is in us, we have to walk in righteousness. And not only that, my brothers and sisters, it is the Lord. The Lord called us to do his will. We should not play with that. The anointing of God, the spirit of God, because God is a holy God. We have to walk. Whatever we do, we have to allow the Holy Spirit to lead us in everything, in everything. As long as we call ourselves children of the Most High God, and that's what makes us children of God because we are led by His Spirit. So we cannot walk according to our flesh. We got to die to that flesh so that the Spirit can lead us so that his name could be glorified in everything that we do although we see david had his shortcoming in in life we know all about the shortcomings that was as a result of his flesh however 
one thing we must say when we lead, when we read the life of, of of David, he never allowed himself to depart. He never allowed. He never allowed. One thing he never allowed to depart from his heart was um, how he felt towards God, his love for God, his honor for God, his trust for God, his obedience to God. Yes, he may have sinned in his flesh, but his heart never departed from God. Never. He really, truly loved God with all his heart and genuinely wants to please him. And we see that in his writing. Um, you know, when we read the Psalms, we see when he goes before the Lord, how he repent with a, a true how he cry out from a true heart a true repented heart and the Lord always honor that you know my brothers and sisters the Lord knows a true repented heart a sincere heart therefore David ruled with the fear of God and we have to Live with the fear of God. Fear of God. Just as our brother was praying earlier, said the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. We will be wise when we fear God. We will gain wisdom. And fearing God is not in a way to say, are oh, we hiding from God or oh, he is so dreadful. No, it's to reverence him is to consider his holiness in everything that we do is to remember that he is god and he's a holy god and he's a righteous god that's the kind of fear fear like in reverence not out of um us you know like the world fear like the world or the the the, the devil use fear to rule the world not that kind of fear because that kind of fear when we have towards God, that will draw us closer to God, deeper in Him. And when we fear God that way, we will do what pleased God. There were kings who came to the throne only after their father died. This means they were heir to the throne. And many of them did not walk with the ways of in the ways of God. If you look at in the book of Second Chronicles, it talks about uh, when you when you read about all the different kings and the things that they do. The, oh, there were some wicked kings. There were some who were so wicked. And the Bible tell you every time you see when you read when you go through the different or oh, this person rule over this nation, they tell you and this and this king walk in the ways of God. And every one of them who walked in the way of God, you see how they, before they go to war, they consult with God. Should we go? Should not go? You see, they were successful. Their kingdom, they reigned. Some of them even reigned in peace. There was no, some of them, there was no war because their heart was right towards God. But the wicked ones, they will go from one war after another. They would just do things out of their own flesh. They didn't care. Even when the Lord um, um, sent a messenger or prophet to speak to them, they were so arrogant. They don't listen. They do whatever. And you see, and when you read about about them it's right it's all there in, in in the first um in the old testament go through um second chronicles go through all, all of them you'll see you'll read about them and you'll see the difference when the anointing is not there they they just do wicked things they rule with iron fists there was no peace in the land it's very important as a leader and we're not just talking about king. We're not just talking about head of state. We're just talking about individual. At some point, one way or another, we are in position of, of leading. It may be at your workplace. It might be in your home. It might be in your family. It might be in a position, you know, as a mother, you, you, you're you supposed to lead your children. As a father, you're supposed to lead your children. You know, as a, a, a worker, whatever you, wherever you work, there's a, um, there's an assignment 
is leadership it doesn't have to be a big title whatever title it is it's a leadership title we got to take it seriously and work unto God with the fear of God reverence God do what is right at his sight when nobody is looking are we still doing the right thing that will please God or we only do things when we know their eyes are upon us but guess right my brothers and sisters his eyes is always upon us. The eyes that we don't see is always watching. It's the same eyes who watch um, David in the back desert um, um, mining the sheep of his father in such dignity, in such honor. Mm? It's the same eyes who also picked him and anointed him to be king over the children of Israel. So God is watching. His eyes is always watching us. Just remember that. In all our deed, our action, in our ways of dealing with one another, uh, the ways that we speak, the ways we conduct ourselves. My brothers and sisters, if not now, when? Now is the time when we know, uh, as we hear there's um, rumors of wars and, and gross darkness coming. These are the things that Jesus um, told us about. But he told us fear not, you know, that he's with us always. That is, is not the end yet, according to Matthew 24. But this is the time for us. He said, our Redeemer draw nigh. So if our Redeemer draw nigh and he's coming to for a church without blemish in any spot, wouldn't it be the time for us to start checking ourselves, to check our, check, start checking out our garments? Stop focusing on others there in their garments. Focus, focus on our, just like the, 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 the the parable of the ten virgins where you have five five virgins who probably was fo too much focusing on the things of, of the world of the things of other of the other but instead of each and individually but the five ones who were focusing on making sure that their lamp they had enough oil the oil we're talking about is the holy spirit is the holy spirit in us is the Holy is working things in us not about you know those uh, anointing for, for us to do those great things and mighty again it's all good on the sight of man and the sight of god but what is it what would it profit as jesus said for us to gain the whole world and to lose our eternal salvation uh eternal life in jesus christ and he you know he said uh, uh, we should not we should not be so thinking that we are so arrived that we 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 have it that it that is good with us no it is not good until we make it in we don't know who's gonna make it or who's not gonna make it so it is not a time for us to point fingers at each other, but it's time for us to look within, to see, allow the Holy Spirit, if there's any, any spot in us, to remove those spots. It is time for us to get our act together, to, to get our...